uh, language failing the reach of lament. The cry of lament emerges from the abyss of profound mourning and sorrow, expressing the unbearable condition of loss. It is cried out in moments when the pain of loss overwhelms us with such an intensity that we seem utterly unable to express it in words, as if our language had completely broken down, revealing its inadequacy in the face of profound sorrow by disintegrating into nonverbal exclamations and disconsolate cries. We usually think of lament as an anguished response to deep loss and sorrow, expressed in prim primordial cries and shrieks, bursting forth in a vast arise of elegies and other poems, biblical lamentations, song and music. Lament can address a loved one's specific death or express the deepest mourning for a lost country or idea. It can be voiced by professional mourners, usually women, at the time of an individual's death or burial, or can be cried aloud in the solitudes of one's own unbearable loss. Despite lament's diversity of expressive forms, these forms are united by an important characteristic. Lament is never merely about a specific event of loss, even when it seems that such an event has initiated it, but always expresses in its innermost essence a cry that intimates the sheer ineffability of loss as such. Hence its unique paradox. Although it is a linguistic act that patently expresses deep sorrow through exclamations or cries, lament in its very expression touches most deeply on the inexpressible. Lament is therefore at once the height of expression and the expressive form that undermines, even threatens altogether the stable structure of language understood as communication or proposition. Today, I would like to offer an alternative to the way we tend to think of lament. That is, as an expression of pain at a specific loss or the absence of a singular lost loved object. Instead, I will argue that in effect, lament expresses the failure of language in the face of loss, but is also a form of expression that fails language, makes language itself stumble. Born out of language's failures, lament transforms these failures into the very substance of its expression, into, moreover, its strength and essence. I will begin here with some remarks on how we should understand the, the term failure when applied to language, and then proceed to a more detailed account of the nature of lament as it is presented by Gershom Scholem in his early diaries in a text entitled On Lament and Dirge. Among what are obviously many sources we could use to discuss lament, Sholem's text stands out. Though written as an epilogue to his translation of some chapters from the Book of Lamentations, the essay does not dwell on the biblical context of the interpretation of lament. Instead, Sholem offers a unique and forceful discussion of lament's linguistic structure. Sholem's analysis, as I will show, while retaining the understanding of lament both as a passionate expression of sorrow and a theological response to it, introduces the possibility of thinking about lament outside such obvious and accepted frameworks. Along with his discussion of biblical lamentations expressing mourning and loss, David's grief over Jonathan's death or the Jewish people's mourning over the destruction of the temple, Sholem finds something in lament that goes far beyond the restricted biblical or theological context of the text. He perceives that lament's singularity is neither psychological nor theological, but first and foremost linguistic, for it reveals something about the essence of language itself. 